Hi everyone, welcome to the KA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima and today we're going to be talking about deserialization, right? So last video we, we talked how can we map uh, a more complex JSON uh, and we're going to be using that mapping in order to be able to deserialize which is we're going to transform that JSON into a job object that is deserialization. Right? So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Hit the bell so you can receive not the notifications of my next videos. And I'm also going to be posting the links for the previous videos so you can keep it up, right? So let's start. So the first thing that I want to show you here is that we can, our store already has some data, right? So I'm going to make sure we, our store, it's, uh, it's down. So if I go here to localhost, there is nothing, right? It's not that it's not there. But now we can do uh, start. I'm going to have to wait a couple seconds. There you go. If we search for something, let's say find pets by status, this is what we're going to be doing and by available we already have some pets quite some pets we have in a, in, in a list right so but this is i don't want xml i want json so we have a list of pets we have id1 id2 id4 id7 have a few maybe i don't know five six so we're going to be using that in our benefit, right? And every time that you that you change something, when you stop and restart the the store, you're going to have the same data there, right? If you add something, it's going to be deleted. It's going to not delete it. It's going to be gone, right? Because when you that this is in memory, right? Everything that we are doing is in memory. So when we start, it's going to be a fresh memory, right? So last uh, last uh, video we briefly did something related to implementing this one. I'll be posting the video here so you can watch. But we were just showing how we did the mapping of pets because this is what we need to do. This is the mapping that we need to do in order to be able to map to this. Uh, so yeah, so we need to start right now. All right. So given that I have pets available, we already have pets available, so I don't actually need to do anything here. I'm just going to delete this and this is going to be a blank. Uh, I don't also need uh, this. This is going to be a blank implementation because it, we already have pets available. If we do not have pets available, uh, we would have to create some pets. Right, and this is a strategy that you can also use uh, in your test. It's called uh, seed data. You have a data that's going to be uh, stored or uploaded or inserted or whatever uh, when your system boots, right? So we have a seed data that's going to populate some data for you, right? So you don't have to do everything from scratch. So this is a strategy that you want. But for, for the sake of uh, understanding the scenario, we need to have pets available to test the which pets we have available, right? When I search for pets available, and that's why I'm putting the given for the sake of understanding the scenario. But the scenario is going to be blank. Right, the magic is going to start happening here, right? We're going to implement this. Uh, I'll enter create step definition. I'm going to put on the pet step definitions and while well, I have already my scenario here. So when I search for all pets available, so what I need to do here, we already have the pet store, right? We already have the pet, sorry, we don't have the pet API. I thought we had the pet API. We're going to create the pet API. I'm going to call it pet API on my API. This is the endpoint that we're going to be using. So v3 pet find status available. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a private 
static final, which is a constant string, right? And say find pets by status endpoint, right? And I'm going to put the endpoint here. I'm going to remove the sidebar just to be a little bigger. And this is not going to be the available uh, value. It's going to be a variable here, status, right? Everything's fine. So now I'm going to implement our method, not this one. I'm going to implement our method, right? So what we, we want to do, we want to receive a list of pets. So this is a list. You can see that this is not only one element. This is a list of elements. So this is going to be a public list of pet, right? And I'm going to, I need to import the pet. I need to import the list. And I'm going to give it a name, uh, get pet by status, right? Since this is a pet by status, I'm going to do a string status. I need to receive the status. And we can also implement, now we can implement the rest assure itself, right? So it's going to be a given. Need to import the given. I'm going to import everything from rest assure. So I'm going to put dot asterisk. So I don't have to do uh, one by one import. So what I'm going to do is, this is a pass param, right? So we have been using pass param so far. So this is a pass param the value that we need to substitute is called status is this value here not this one and the content is on the parameter of the method status right then when we do a get right this is a get to find we want to return something i can do then return s pet.class this would be fine if we did not want to receive a string right a, a list sorry so i need to return so this is complaining because this is a list and this is not a list right if this contract here would be only one element the way that we just did would be fine but this is a multiple pets right so this needs to be a list so we need to do a different way. And the way that we're going to do is then, I need to say, I want to extract, what I want to extract, the body. And what is on the body? A JSON path, this is a JSON, right? And I, what I want, I want to get a list. And I need to tell, where is my list, right? I could, everything's on the root, but sometimes there is something next to this like a a, a a string here say like data or uh, i don't know pets or something right but there isn't anything here so i don't have to put anything so this is going to be a blank and i'm going to say i want a pet dot class so now we need to use this in our step definition right so I need to come to my scenario and I need to implement this. This is what we have been doing, right? This is a search for pets available. So I need to alt enter, create step definition, creating the pet step definition. Awesome. So I need to call my pet API here. So what I'm going to say is private pet API, pet API as a variable. And I need to instantiate this. So I'm going to do this on the constructor. <coughs> Cucumber is going to run the constructor of the step definition automatically. So now I need to create the pet API. It's going to be a new pet API. Great. So now I can say pet API dot get pet. But what I'm going to pass on here needs to be available. Right, but I want this scenario to be reusable. I can use this scenario to search any kind of status. Right, so this, this needs to be a variable. Right? So I'm going to change the available word here for the curly brackets words word. If you don't know why I did that, 
Uh, I have a video explaining how uh, rest assured, sorry, Cucumber works with regular expressions and how you can do that. I'm going to be posting videos for you to watch. But if you go back to our scenario, now this has been mapped as a variable you see, in, in, in blue. Awesome. So now I need to send this to my method. I'm going to say status. And now I can say I can send to here as well. Right. So I'm going to I also need to receive these. Right. I also need to receive this as a list of pet. So this is going to be a list of pet. I'm going to call actual pets. I need to import pet and I need to import list. I'm going to put a, a print in here just for us to debug. And I'm going to execute this in debug mode so we can check. So there is a failure, right? And the failure is Jackson, which is the library that does serialization and deserialization, said invalid definition cannot construct instance of the pet. No creators like the full construction. So if we look at our domain, we we don't have we only have data and builder. There is no constructor. We have constructor here on our category, but not on pet. So I need to do a constructor. So I'm going to say a all args constructor. So it's going to have constructor with every attribute at, attribute. And also I'm going to say no args constructor. Right. Awesome. I'm going to rerun my test. Control D to rerun my test in debug mode. It still have a failure. It's still on Jackson. So now it says unrecognized field tags not marked as ignorable, right? So if you if you look here in our contract, we have tags. We have tags here, but we do not have tag here. This I did on purpose because I wanted to show you how we can ignore tags, right? If there is a tag that you don't know, or not that you don't know, you don't expect, you don't, you don't want to receive an error. You want to ignore that tag. So what we do is JSON, we do another annotation called JSON, it's right here, down here, ignore properties. And I say ignore unknown true because the default is false. I want true. Now I'm going to rerun my test and you're going to see that now it was able to reach this line and you can actually have the actual pets with all the six pets uh, and you're going to see that the tag is ignored. It's not here. It's going to be no, right? Awesome. So now we have a pet, a list of pet. Now what we need to do is we need to say, I receive a list of pets available, right? So I need to implement this. And also I need to make this accessible here, right? Otherwise I cannot do much. So. I'm going to create a class variable called um, list of pet and I'm going to say actual pets, right? So I can remove now this. So now that you have access to the actual pets, what I can say is assert that my actual pet is, I'm going to use is, and I want this, so the only thing that I'm saying here is that this, is, this needs to be a list. So I want, so then I want this not to be empty. So is not empty. So if you look here, it imported the Hemcrest matchers is the matchers not and the matchers empty. So then this, you can actually read it. Assert that actual pet is not empty. And I can rerun my test and you're going to see that it passed, right? If I remove the not, now it's saying that is empty, 
and it's going to fail because I'm expecting an empty collection and it is not a empty collection so let me put the not back again and that's it we have our deserialization of a list which is a little bit more complex and you have our scenario implemented with our pet api so thank you for watching this far if you haven't subscribed please do so hit the bell to receive the notifications of my next videos if you like it give the thumbs up uh, and i ask you to do to do the thumbs up if you like it because uh, that's how you, youtube algorithm works to broadcast more to other people and to increase the channel and i see you on next video